today we've gathered to talk about the 2007 American horror comedy film, Planet Terror, directed by Robert Rodriguez. Now, you have never seen this, right? No, never. Um, this is part of like the uh, Grindhouse double feature film. I actually saw this at the movies. When I was, so 2007, I would have been 14-ish. And uh, you commented on how long the movie was, right? Yeah, it felt long as shit. So I watched it, and they showed that first, and I was like, oh, tight. And then another fucking movie started. <laughs> <laughs> and I had gone to go see it at like 7, and I told my mom, like, hey, I'm going to go watch this movie. We didn't leave the theater till like 1 in the morning. Jesus. She was pissed. But that's like the memory I have of going to go see this. Um, did you notice how at the beginning they had like a trailer for a movie? Mm-hmm. So there's more of them. There was actually like five fucking trailers. Somewhere before, somewhere in the middle. I can't remember if they have something after. But they were all these like um, parody fake horror films that were like over the top and shit. Mm-hmm. Some of them are pretty far. Like if I could, I think a Death Proof probably have some more of them, but. It's recommended to check them out because, like, Machete, that, was, uh, that wasn't the trailer for Machete. That was, like, a fake thing they just made. But the reception for it was so good, that's why they made the Machete movies. Oh, shit. You, what, you thought it was, like, a legit trailer for it? Yeah, because I knew that Machete was a, was a movie already. Yeah, no, it wasn't a thing. It was, like, a joke in this movie. Okay. That's why it's so over the fucking top. But, uh... A little fun fact. I thought about bringing it up while we were watching it, but I was like, it makes sense to just do it on this. Yeah. Because me and this dude literally just watched this movie like five minutes ago. Yeah. But uh, so Robert Rodriguez, have you seen a lot of his movies? No, I don't think I've seen any of them. You haven't seen any of them? I can't. I know he has a, have you seen Spy Kids? Yeah. He's the guy who made fucking Spy Kids. Oh, okay. Well, never mind. Yeah, he made a lot of random ones. That's why, like, the dude, uh, Danny Trejo, that plays Machete's in a lot of this shit. Hmm. He made the Mariachi, Desperado. I definitely noticed, like, a heavy Mexican theme in, like, all of his shit. Yeah. Ooh, The Faculty. He made some fucking bangers, bro. Sin City. He made The Faculty? He made The Faculty. Oh, I love that movie. This newer one he made called uh, Alita Battle Angel. Have you seen that? No, I want to see that. The movie's fucking fire. I didn't know he directed that. That's crazy. So yeah, man. Robert Rodriguez. Fucking dopeness. It makes sense that he was paired up with like Quentin Tarantino because he did the other half of the double feature. Mm-hmm. And I guess their styles kind of mesh because it's like this super violent with like comedy undertones and shit. Yeah. But... Now, um, how do you feel about, like, I guess I should say what the movie's about first. So, the movie's about, this is going to be a rough one to fucking sum up. <laughs> you want to try it? Um, no, nah, you go ahead. <laughs> yeah, dude, because I'm, I'm even blanking. So, to make a long story short, it's a zombie movie, very action-y. It's pretty much set in, like, the middle of the outbreak there are some very outrageous characters that do some very outrageous things throughout it. And that's pretty much it. They're trying to survive a version of a zombie outbreak. Mm-hmm. I think we'll leave it as simple as that. But yeah, so this was like ultra violent, over the top, gory, and bloody, right? Yeah. Do you generally like those type of movies? Uh, to a certain extent. Can you think of, like, other stuff you'd compare it to? Like, uh... Fuck. Dust, from Dust Till Dawn? Yeah, it's the same director. I was gonna yeah. say that, too. That's, like, the easiest comparison. Yeah. Because, like, the graphicness is very over-the-top, very heavy prosthetics. There's not a lot of CGI I didn't see. Yeah. Like, I feel like there might have been a bunch of touch-ups in post, but, like, the actual stuff, like, looked like it was legit there. I think the guy who did the makeup is uh, Tom Savini. I'm pretty sure you don't know who that is, but he's, like, a pretty big name in horror. He uh, he did, like, the old Dawn of the Dead movies, the original zombie ones. 
He did a couple of the bigger Friday the 13th movies from back in the day. Uh, he was the uh, the deputy that was real clumsy in the movie. Oh, okay. That's who Tom Savini is. He was also in From Dust Till Dawn. He was the uh, sex machine character. He has like a gun that flips out from his fucking dick. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. That's the same guy. I think he does all the makeup for these movies. Okay. Um, But no, outside of that, I think this is a pretty like cut and dry, heavy action, a lot of blood and guts. Not so much scary. I think there's some moments that you could that would scare some people. Mm. If you're really not into gory shit, this would probably get you. Yeah. Just on the gore factor. <clears throat> or like um the sickly thing, I guess if you're a germaphobe. Like all the pus and the sores and all that shit. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. That would definitely fuck some people up. Um, but more so than that, I think the tone of this is really, if you're really into like, if you have a morbid sense of humor, this would probably be something you would enjoy. But, um, with all that being said, it's a pretty cut and dry zombie movie. So we're going to go ahead and just get into the breakdown of this. If you haven't seen it, recommend you going to check it out and then coming back. Uh, with all that being said, we're going to go ahead and fuck up Planet Terror. So, like we said, this movie starts, they want to parody a Grindhouse feature. Now, I don't know enough about Grindhouse as much as I should. But what I think it is, if memory serves and what this movie kind of implies, there were, like, old movies in the 70s and 80s that were, like, really corny, cheesy music, over-the-top violence, dirty-ass jokes, ridiculous, like, nude and sex scenes put in, right? I think what I read is like exploitation films. So like Cannibal Holocaust and all that shit. So that's how this starts. It kind of, like the whole movie theater kind of takes on the form of a Grindhouse film, what it would have been like at that time. Like the voice is all deep and it's all like, now our future presentation. Blah. Shit like that. Yeah. And it opens with a trailer of the Machete film, which we referenced. That's a pretty big deal actually now, I think, right? Yeah. I think it's a pretty mainstream movie at this point. Mm -hmm. So they did the whole trailer for that. I mean, if you've seen Machete, you know what Machete is. It's the the Mexican day laborer that mercs the CIA. Pretty much anybody. Anybody he's hired to. Some, like, personal business. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's self-explanatory. So we're going to go ahead and get into... The movie starts out with this, like, the opening credit scene was tight. With uh, Rose McGowan as Cherry, the dancer, stripping. Bro, she's a baddie, bro. She's all right. She's all right. Uh, bro, like, now I think she's kind of bad. But back in the day, bro, at this time, this was, like, prime Rose McGowan. I don't know. Every time I see her, I just think of Charmed. And you didn't like Charmed? No. What was wrong with Charmed? corny it's corny yeah and how does that like affect how she looks it doesn't just i don't know <laughs> just takes just you out me. of it man yeah i'm sorry dude but we like him pale with dark hair <laughs> but yeah so after she does this like uh dance on stage she starts crying it's never really explained why unless i miss something she leaves the stage. She goes into the back changing room. We see, like, strippers making out. This really, this actor that's the boss comes in. And he's, like, super hammy. He's like, hey, don't do that back here. Go do that shit on stage. <laughs> and uh, then he goes up to Cherry. And then he's telling her, like, you don't cry on stage. Just pretty much being a prick. And uh, she quits on the spot, right? Mm -hmm. So then she just kind of, like, walks out of the strip club. And now she's footing it down a road, right? Yeah. And then we see the army trucks drive by, and somehow she falls and blames them. Yeah, I didn't understand that. I think it's implied that, like, they were closer than what we saw, but from the vantage point that we had, they didn't look that close. She just kind of, like, they drive by, and she falls over and gets pissed off. Yeah. Like, 
throws herself over some trash cans. Yeah. For some reason in the middle of the road. This is very, it's very random. But I mean, then she got that cut in her leg. Yeah. That was the whole point of the fall, I'm pretty sure. And uh, after this, isn't it the... Um... Oh, yeah, it's where they go. To, it's the, the the trucks drive by this sign, and it literally just says military base two miles. Yeah. Like, the most generic sign possible, right? Yeah. Like, it might as well have just said the warehouse. <laughs> and uh, at this, like, military meetup, it's, uh, it's like some Middle Eastern guy. I remember him as a guy from Lost. I don't know if you ever saw Lost, the TV show. Uh, no, I never watched it. I think his name ends up being Abby in this movie. Abby, did you pick up on the names pretty easy in this movie? No, I'm horrible with names. So we're just going to call them by like their racial stereotypes, right? The Middle Eastern dude? Probably. Yeah. I'm try not to. And um, there's a cage that with, hole, with like a hole in it, like if something's broken out. And this guy, Abby, he's like, um, what the hell happened to my specimens, dog? And this other guy, this white dude, right? He's like, oh, they got out, but you still got the gas. There's gas behind them. Little canisters. We don't know what the fuck for. But that doesn't please Abby. So uh, Abby pulls out this, like, jar, and it's got, like, balls in it, just testicles, just floating, right? Yeah. And he's like, hey, I'm going to have to collect your balls because I'm upset. So this dude gets his nuts taken out by a mob, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, then he gets dome-pieced. Yeah. It's never explained why he wants people's balls. It's just, you know, his thing. Yeah. Like a little over-the-top fetish type <laughs> shit. It's very much so. I think that what Robert Rodriguez went for this is he wanted his characters to be very eccentric. He wanted a lot of them to stand out, which for me, they did. Yeah. Like, that's memorable. The guy who wants your balls. Easy. And uh, after this part... We learn that one of the army guys standing behind Abby is fucking Bruce Willis, who's never given a name, and I fully expect that he is supposed to be called Bruce Willis this entire movie. Or was I mistaken? No. I they think never refer to him as anything. Yeah. So Bruce Willis comes out of the truck, and he's also displeased. And uh, he's ready to just dump his fucking Abby. And uh, he has he has like a respirator on, like a fucking Bane mask. Pulls the thing off, and through general conversation, he starts to get, like, sores appearing all over his face. And right before they kill Abby, Abby fucking shoots one of the uh, canisters of the gas, and it releases this toxin in the air. Everybody starts getting all mutated and shit, so we're assuming there's, like, some zombie virus inside this thing. And that's how the outbreak starts. That's how we get our zombie movie. Shout out to Return of the Living Dead. Shout out to Resident Evil. Shout out to every other zombie movie known to man. This is very much a generic zombie movie with some over-the-top action and violence scenes in it. I just, like, paired all that up in my mind just now. <laughs> nice. Have you ever seen any of those zombie movies? Resident Evil. Uh, what other ones did you Return say? of the Living Dead. I don't remember if I've seen that one. Any of the Night of the Living Dead movies? I've seen some. I forgot to ask. Do you even like zombie movies? They're all right. They're okay. Mm. You never seen one that you were like, no, that's a zombie movie? I mean, I think my favorite would be Resident Evil. But the first one. it's actually like a scary movie you know the uh -huh. other ones are like more action okay so you want to see like a zombie movie that actually scares you someday yeah i'll do what i can <laughs> and so after the dude releases like the toxins into the air uh, da, da, da. okay so we see a car pull up to a barbecue slash gas station. It's very random. And the reveal of who the girl is, did you see that it was fucking Fergie from the Black Eyed Peas? 
I didn't know that was her. Yeah. She gets no other name but Fergie. And uh, <laughs> after this, we see a couple waking up at a house. Uh, the husband is Josh Brolin, fucking Thanos himself, Cable from Deadpool, some guy from No Country from Old Men, very well-known actor. I think this is before all that. Yeah. And uh, he seems like a grumpy fuck. Not quite like the villain I think he's portrayed to be. We don't ever actually see why. Because his wife is plotting to escape from him with her son and her lover, whom she's texting on her little BlackBerry phone. But yeah, so she's plotting, and they kind of make her husband out to be menacing. I never picked up their names, so they're just the doctor and the doctor's wife. Oh yeah, and the son seems like he might be on the spectrum a little bit. (laughs) Are you laughing, man? There's something not there, you know? <laughs> yeah. Because he has, like, two toys, and I can't remember the line he says. It's, um... He said, uh, let me eat your brains so I can gain all your knowledge. Let me eat your brain so I can gain all your knowledge. He said it just like that, real yeah. slow and slurry. Interesting kid. And, uh, so after this... We're back at the barbecue spot. We learned that it's owned by a guy named JT, who has some of the most beautiful eyes I've ever seen in my life. The motherfuckers were like a hard blue, bro. I didn't pay attention to his eyes. I saw you lick your lips when he, they came on screen. But anyway, so... It was all the barbecue. <laughs> that's what you call it? All the sauce. So we see a, a, a random dude walk into the gas station. Uh... We learned that his name is Ray, but he looked like a white dude. He was a very <laughs> pale Hispanic guy. I can relate. Uh, he didn't look white to me. He looked Hispanic instantly to you? I mean, I, I guess, yeah. I don't know, dude. I mean, he had the jet black hair and beard, but I mean, the skin was just ice pale. I think it's because I've seen him in other movies where he's playing a Hispanic character. You've seen him in other movies? I've never seen him in anything. I think he was in, uh, from Dusk Till Dawn, the uh, TV series. Ah, okay. I watched like three seasons of that as background noise and never looked at the screen. Mm. Didn't like it. Yeah, it wasn't a good show. Yeah. So this dude, Ray, goes into the co- into the barbecue spot, and he gets coffee and cigarettes, because that's what this barbecue shop sells. Then again, it is like a little backwoods fucking barbecue spot, so they can do whatever they want. They're in Texas, too, right? Mm-hmm. And so Ray walks up, and he sees that Cherry is at this barbecue spot, and she's sitting in a little booth. He walks up to her. They have a little spiel. They have some history. He's like, bitch, you stole my jacket. She kind of plays it off, and then he dips, right? Or does he offer a ride? Uh, She asked him for a ride. She said that she could use one. Then he does like that innuendo. He's like, I'll give you a ride. Yeah. (laughs) So then we see the married couple. They're both doctors because they work at a hospital. So either the guy's a doctor and she's a nurse or... Some fucking form of medical work. Mm-hmm. And as they separate, once they walk in through the doors, uh, the doctor's wife just says bye. And the doctor's all like, yo, don't you mean I'll see you later? And I think that's supposed to be foreshadowing for her little plot she's having. that She's going to dip on his ass. Mm-hmm. And uh, at some point, an EMT driver walks up to the doctor right after this, and he's all like, hey, your wife's looking mighty fine. She looks like she could suck the bend out of a river. How would you feel about that compliment? Yeah, no. I don't. Would would there be a check, or would you be able to just play it off? There'd probably be a check. I don't. (laughs) (laughs) It's a compliment, though, man. Nah. I get that. It's just, it's not the compliment that you give, you know? Yeah, I feel you. 
I respect the attempt, though. <laughs> he gets points for creativity. And uh, so some dude walks in, and he's got a bite on his arm, right? Mm-hmm. And um, he says it just happened. But when the doctor looks at it, it's all like getting gangrene and infected and spreading. And he's like, this looks like it happened 14 days ago, man. And he's like calling the guy a liar. And he tells the guy like, yo, we're going to have to take this fucking arm. Because you have a temp of 105. And all the while this whole thing is happening, the there's another doctor in the background looking at a computer screen. And it's got pictures of like uh, mutated penises. Yeah. <laughs> Like, it's just straight a dude's thighs open, and you just see, like, E.T. in between his legs crawling out of his body. Yeah. Is that a good way to sum it up? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, imagine if you took, like a, like, a pizza that had nothing on it but cheese, and you, like, took it in your hands and just, like, smashed it into a mountain and stuck it in between a dude's legs. That's what it looked like. Still hungry. <laughs> oh, okay. Is that a fair way to sum it up? Yeah. That's good. And so the dude sticks his tongue out also for the doc. I don't know why he doesn't look at his tongue. Is that a thing? I don't know. Um, uh, you know, usually like in a routine checkup, they check the back of your throat. I think that's what he was trying to do. Ah, okay. Because he sticks his tongue out. And uh, it looks like Freddy Krueger's tongue. It's all fucking sores, pus, slimy shit. And it's at this point that he uh, calls his woman in, the doctor's wife. And she comes in, and she's got these, like, three needles in her pen pocket or pen holder or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And I always thought, I remember back in the day, I thought it was cool, like, the little fucking, what would you call that, what she says? She's like, this needle here is for the pain. This one's to make sure that my other friend is working. And with this one, you'll never see me again. Is that a fucking limerick? Poem? Sure. Go with the first one. We'll go with the limerick, because neither one of us know what that is. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so she knocks the dude out with these needles. And we go back to Fergie. Her car's broken down now after she's left the barbecue shop. She was there earlier because it overheated. She probably should have junked this fucking car. Mm-hmm. And uh, now she's trying to hitch a ride. And let's be honest here. Nobody is not going to pull over for fucking Fergie, bro. Like, five cars pass her up while she's, like, standing in the middle of the road. Would you pick Fergie up? I don't know. It looked like all those cars were running from something. That's what I got from that. I don't think so, man. I think they were all just ignoring her. Just being assholes? Yeah. And uh, we kind of see her looking flustered, looking all around herself and shit. And we learn why. Because after, like, the third or fourth car ignores her, she gets tackled and eaten in the middle of the fucking road. And as they drag her body off, we see Ray and Cherry in his big-ass truck driving by. And uh, they're like, what's that? And he's like, ah, it's just roadkill. And uh, then he gives this monologue out of nowhere about fucking, uh, about deer, right? Mm-hmm. He was like, did you know that if you see a deer, he's like 90% of people die or some shit when they try to swerve from a deer. He's like, that's why when you see a deer, you floor it. Just go right through him. And then he immediately swerves, and it looks like it's a deer from our vantage point. Truck flips. And Cherry's like, why the fuck didn't you, why'd you swerve? And he's like, it wasn't a deer. And just at that moment, bam, she gets torn from the car. The zombies pull her out of the car, right? Yeah. And uh, after this, Ray pulls, Ray goes into the back of his truck and he pulls out this fucking giant rifle. It's got like a night vision scope on it, all kinds of shit. Mm -hmm. And so he goes into the woods. He starts two-piecing up these fucking zombies. Doesn't kill him though, right? Doesn't he just wound him? Yeah. And uh, he finds Cherry, who doesn't have a leg. One of the zombies ran off with her leg. And uh, I think he takes her to the hospital, right? Yeah. (sighs) 
Ooh. And uh, then the sheriffs show up and they take Ray. They have questions for the man. And uh, as this is happening, an uh, Asian doctor starts talking to the main doctor, the husband. And I was confused why he got subtitles when he spoke. I didn't even see the subtitles. Bro, That's he had why fucking he's... subtitles like as he was talking. Like, yeah, he had an accent, but it wasn't that bad. Because the he was it was like your stereotypical like heavy accent Asian, you know, like, oh doctor, you want to come take man's arm off or some shit like that. And it had yellow subtitles under it, and that's why I was like, what kind of fucking shit is that? <laughs> Maybe that's a grindhouse joke that I don't know or some shit. Uh, probably. So the sheriffs are talking to Ray about why he has a gun. He knows he's not supposed to have a gun. Apparently there's some history between the two that we don't know about. And uh, as they're having this conversation, Ray's noticing that there's a bunch of people with like sores and shit all over themselves walking around the hospital. And uh, I think he says something like, we should have this conversation somewhere else. That's when he gets cuffed and they take his ass to the station, I think. So this movie kind of jumps around a lot because it goes back to JT's barbecue spot where he sees like two people just standing outside of his property line and he's on the phone now with the sheriff. Or that guy's not the sheriff because there's there's a definitive sheriff, right? Remember the old man, that lady's dad, I think is yeah. like the sheriff. But it's kind of yeah. confusing because that other guy acts like he's in charge. Maybe he's like lieutenant or some shit. Yeah, so he's talking to a deputy, and uh, he's telling him his his brother's the deputy that's talking to uh, Ray, and he's like, hey, there's some fucking dudes standing outside my property line, and before the conversation goes anywhere, the zombies come to the door, we see that they're zombies, and then the phone call ends. So the doc sees new bodies coming in. He's chewing on a thermometer as he's watching them because that's kind of his spiel, I guess, his character development thingy. And uh, he's talking to the EMT, the same one that told him that his wife looks like she could suck the bend out of a river. And uh, he tells him, like, you got to be careful chewing that thermometer. I didn't even realize that's what that was. Yeah, because he kept taking it out, checking his own temperature. Hmm. And uh, those have mercury in them, right? That's why they're not good. Yeah. So when they pull back one of the sheets, uh, he sees something, and we don't really know what it is. We just see that he bites down and breaks the glass, and he's got shit dripping all over his mouth now. Yeah. And I think he says something like, call my wife. And next we see Cherry wake up in her hospital bed, and we see that she's got no leg. And uh, she starts crying, having a mini panic attack. I thought that was a pretty realistic scene, actually. Yeah, it was. Because, like, I would assume that when people wake up as, like, amputee victims, they're pretty fucked up about it. Like, you don't just go to physical therapy. You got to go to, like, actual therapy, right? Mm -hmm. To, like, cope with the loss of a limb. Um. Yeah, I just think that was a really accurate depiction of that. That's like the one like serious kind of moment in the movie. And uh, after this, we get the reveal from the doc to his wife that one of the corpses that's come in is Fergie. And, uh, so at this point he had snatched up Fergie's phone and he already knew the deal, I'm assuming, right? Mm hmm But he's playing dumb trying to get his wife to confess and he tries to snatch her phone out of her pocket, but she swipes it back and, uh, she's trying to hide it in her hands, but he pulls out the, uh, the needles that she has in her pocket. He just starts sticking this bitch in her hands. And uh, now her hands are, like, going numb and shit. And, um, yeah, she slowly starts to drop the fucking phone, like, into his hands. And then he puts them together. He has, like, he breaks the code down or whatever. 
Yeah, you like put them together. I don't know if you remember those phones. You were able to see the messages between each other if you put them. No shit. Side by side. Yeah. I never knew that. I never had one of those. Yeah, me neither. And uh, so at this point, he snatches the uh, the red needle out of her pocket, and he's about to jab her in the eye, but the EMT driver busts in and like stops him pretty much. And so he locks her in the room, and he goes to see what the EMT driver was going to show him, and it's a room full of empty hospital beds. All the bodies are gone, apparently. And the doctor says, like, they didn't walk away on their own, but this EMT driver, he's a very hammy guy and he just fucking goes "Mm -mm," and he points at the floor and apparently they did walk away at least that's what it looks like now we go back to the fucking sheriff station and um ray's getting questioned at the station we see the actual sheriff who is He's an old man. He's in a lot of uh, he's in a lot of fucking movies, bro. They've used him for the expanded universe and um, like Kill Bill. You ever seen that? I've seen Kill Bill. You know he was the uh, sheriff who discovers the wedding chapel. Oh, okay. He's the same sheriff in uh, Death Proof. He's in the other half of the Grindhouse movie. He kind of connects these universes. So that's just a nice little callback for that, dude. I think this takes place after all of that. And, um, so yeah, he has some banter with Ray about, like, you don't smoke, do you? And the second he walks out of the room, fucking Ray pulls out a cigarette. So this whole thing is literally just a setup for, uh, another cop or sheriff or whatever they are walks into the building and he's missing a finger. And this guy is Tom Savini, who I was referring to earlier, who does a lot of the makeup for a lot of these horror movies. I don't know if he still does. And uh, this sparks off the first big action sequence, right? Because mm-hmm. I think it's the best way to describe it. They go outside, and it's cops versus zombies, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, this is where we get a real glimpse of what the violence for this movie is going to be like. I mean, we kind of saw it at the beginning with the Bruce Willis scene. Like, whenever somebody gets shot, like, it explodes, and it's red, and leaking everywhere and shit. Yeah. It reminded me a lot of, uh, did you ever go to Cinemark, when they had the arcades, and they had this game called Area 51? Mm-hmm. It looked just like that to me. Yeah. The yeah. camera angles, you got motherfuckers rappelling on ropes. Bop, bop, bop. Same thing. <laughs> this was very heavily, like, just a shoot 'em up movie. So, do you, like, generally like those type of movies? To an extent. Like, I don't know. Would you consider, uh, like, John Wick a shoot 'em up movie? Yeah. Yeah. Then That one's definitely yeah. a lot more, like, realistic, though. Yeah. I like... I, I sort of lean more towards the uh, realistic ones, then, um... Like, Hardcore Henry, I couldn't get into that one. That was too much? Yeah. Mostly because of the camera angles. Like, all the shaking and shit. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. I love them all. I just love the violence. Mm. Like, that's the whole thing. I go into these movies, like, kind of like, all right, show me something different. And I feel like this one kind of delivered in that terms of, like, just the obnoxious violence. Yeah. Show me what this limb looks like if it blows up. How you can tear that off. But so, after this battle, which was a good five minutes, uh, Ray leaves the deputy station with the deputy to get Cherry. They ride off in the uh, his tow truck, which is now not flipped over. Yeah. So, back at the hospital, the doc realizes the infection is spreading and they need to leave. And uh, he walks in on the armless guy killing the Asian doctor. He was sawing his arm off with like a bone saw. And then he uh, turns his attention to the doctor. And he's about to saw into his face. And he even like breaks the, uh, the frame of his glasses. But just as he's about to break the skin, he pulls the fucking saw out of the wall. Unplugs, the power is dead on it. 
And so his next move is to grab his own pus on his face and pop one of the fucking bubbles and just smear the blood all over the doctor's face. Yeah. Which kind of breaks canon for me at this point. This was one of the moments that took me out of the movie because up until this point, we've only seen these zombies focused on eating people, right? Yeah. This is one of the first times where a zombie's made a conscious decision like, oh, no, I don't need to eat him or murder him. I'm just trying to spread my infection. So if that's the case, why aren't all the zombies fucking just getting pus and blood and shit all over people? Could be like a, an abnormal. Oh, like, straight attack on Titan yeah. reference, bro? Yeah, it would make sense if we ever saw that abnormal again. Well, I mean, like Bruce Willis. Oh, fuck. I don't know. <laughs> I, I like the start of the theory though bro i like the start of it all right it shows heart i mean yeah but it's, like i said i think it just to me i think it just broke canon it was plot armor well i don't know he wasn't as to me he wasn't as far gone as a lot of the others and i think because i think it's because his arm was so already cut off he was still somewhat conscious yeah and i think the only reason the infection was spreading because of was because of what was on his tongue already. Well, that makes sense, because he wasn't eating the Asian doctor. He was chopping him up with that saw, right? Yeah. So if he was conscious enough to use a saw, then he was probably conscious enough to, okay. I'm back in a little bit now. So after this, we see, uh, we go to the actual sheriff, the old man. He's like feeding his wife some tomato soup or some shit. And she's in, like, a vegetable-like state, right? Like, mm -hmm. if she had a stroke or some shit. Yeah. And uh, he gets a phone call, and he has to put the... He has to look away from his wife, but then when he looks back to her, like, five seconds later, she is now a zombie. And then the camera kind of cuts away from that moment. And now we see the, doc's, the doctor's wife. She, like, launches herself out of a second-story fucking glass window. Falls into some garbage? Is that what she did? Yeah. She gets out. Her hands are still numb, so she's walking around like a T-Rex. And uh, she goes to open up her car door, slides her fucking hand down, like, the inside of the door handle, and she's trying to use her foot to, like, pull the door open. She trips, snaps that fucking wrist, baby. Yeah. That was probably, like, one of the most painful, like, scenes in the movie for me. Because it's like the most realistic, you know? Yeah, I definitely felt that one. Now, mind you, I think later on, her wrist is completely fine. Yeah. But we, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that when we get to that. So she manages to open the door. She, like, takes a bracelet around her wrist, fastens it to the gear shifter, fucking sticks her hand inside the wheel. That's how she's driving with no hands. And uh, she doesn't notice the pandemic happening around her until this part, because there's, like, some dude running around on fire, people running all over the place and shit. Yeah. So as she pulls off, that's when Ray and the deputy pull up. <clears throat> and uh, he Ray asks the dude, can I have a gun? And nobody wants to give Ray a gun at any point during this movie. It's never really explained why. So Ray has to pull these, like, two black knives out of his fucking glove box. Look like butterfly knives. Butterfly knives. Yeah. And uh, this scene was hard, because he goes into the hospital, right? And he just starts fucking... He makes... So what got me out of it is he makes the conscious decision to put on the doctor's gloves so that he won't get infected. Yeah. All right. And then he just, like, running through, like, killing people. So the gloves took you out of it? No, no, no. So, like, because he gets, he gets to where Cherry is, convinces her that she can still, like, walk or whatever the fuck after he he puts the, uh, like, he breaks that table in her room. And then he puts the table leg into her stump. Yeah, and then as they're walking out, like, before he grabs her, he takes the gloves off. Uh-huh. And then he walks out with her still killing people. So the gloves seem kind of pointless. Yeah. I could see that. Because <clears throat> he looked like a fucking... I just put he shinobi killed all these fucking zombies, bro. Yeah, fucking flipping off the walls. And... He looked like a ninja assassin. Doing parkour and shit, like, out of nowhere. Yeah. 
I thought it was a cool scene. But it is like the one time we see him do something like that. Yeah. I liked it. But like you said, the gloves, I think the gloves is just that comedy aspect of like, oh wait, let him put these doctor gloves on before he fucks all these zombies up. Okay. But yeah, so also like after he finds Sherry, he puts the fucking stump on her leg. And again, it's another comical scene of like her kind of like clumsily walking through the halls like as she's trying to gain her bearings with this fucking peg leg she's got now. And Ray's still doing his like parkour fucking zombie killing moves through the hospital. And so after this, they managed to get to the truck and escape, I think, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Did you uh, notice that whenever they were pulling off, she wasn't all the way in the truck? So he's, like, going about 15 miles an hour while she's, like, hopping, fucking trying to jump onto the truck? Yeah. That was a dick move. (laughs) And so after this, we go to the doc's wife. And she's returned to her home where her son's getting babysitted by these two... Hispanic, scantily clad babysitters. Mm-hmm. And uh, pretty much they're pissed off because they thought they were only going to be working like half the night because Fergie was supposed to pick this kid up. That was part of the plot. But when that didn't happen, they got stuck there. So as soon as they see the doctor's wife, they're flipping out on her. And the doctor's wife's reaction, she looks pretty fucked up at this point. Uh, mascara's all running and shit. Hair's all fucked up. And she literally kicks the babysitters out of the house. Like, gets behind them, kind of shoves them into the door, kicks them in the ass, kicks them out the door. Yeah. That pissed me off, too. And uh, then she finds her son. She's all like, hey, we got to get out of here. Grab your stuff. Don't take a whole lot of shit. And the boy chooses to grab every animal inside of his house. Which I don't, can't remember what all he had. He had a tarantula, a turtle, and a scorpion. And they can all live in the same cages. Yeah. And that's how the dude talks. So as they get into this car, the babysitters attack the car with shovels. And uh, she speeds off, knocking one of the babysitters off the car. And they just start running after her down the street, but they never catch her, obviously. And so in the next scene, it turns out that the entire surviving group has gone to JT's barbecue shop. Because that's where you go. Uh, It's the cops. It's Cherry. Ray. And I think at that point, that's it right there, right? And whatever town people they've grabbed. Yeah, random people. But they went there to get supplies, didn't they? So, I imagine. Well, because the... uh... The deputy, the one that acted like he was in charge. His he said, brother owns the bar, the barbecue shop. Yeah, and he said, grab supplies, we leave, and whatever. Yeah, and this is where he uh, has that box that says all or nothing box. <laughs> the box literally has the words all or nothing on it. And he dumps it over, and it's just nothing but uh, deputy badges. So he deputizes like everybody in the room at that point. And so, after this, they're inside JT's actual shop now, and they find JT's body on the floor, or what they thought was his body, but it turns out he killed the zombies and he just dropped a bunch of barbecue all over himself. Because they had, like, sausages that looked like intestines, the sauce was all over his stomach. And uh, after this, the doc's wife pulls up to a house. We don't know whose house it is, but her and her son are outside. And uh, she points out, like, holy shit, your tooth fell out to the boy. And then he looks at her and he goes, yours did too. She's got a chipped tooth. And then he goes, now we're toothless buddies. (laughs) I love that shit. That was adorable. I had forgotten that part. Like, oh, this kid's adorable. So then she gives the kid a gun so she can go check out the inside of the house. And uh, she kind of sees him kind of playing around with it. And she turns around and she's like, yo. Don't point that gun at yourself because you'll shoot your face off, Timmy. I don't know the kid's actual name. She walks away from the car. Literally two seconds later, bang. She goes to look back in the window and the kid dome-pieced himself. 
So what did you think at that moment? Did you expect it? After she went back to the car to like tell him not to point it at himself? Yeah. Yeah, I did. I was hoping it wouldn't happen, but... Yeah. Like, I feel like the narrative of this movie kind of made it so, like, there wouldn't be a lot of, like, no-holds-barred stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. That's definitely, because, like I said, this is considered, like, exploitation-type film. So, you know, kid dying, it's not out of the realm of possibility in this movie. Yeah. So, after this happens, doesn't... uh Oh, her husband walks up on her with, like, I put puss all over his face. Puss all over his face. <laughs> it's not puss all over the dude's face. And he's still holding the uh, one of the needles to number some more or to knock her out. I can't remember. And zombies start to surround her, but she still has the time to go around and grab her son's body out of the car. And she goes to the door of the house they're at, and it turns out it's the sheriff's house, who is her dad. And there's blood all over the inside of his fucking house. So he murked the, his wife. Yeah. And then it kind of just cuts from here. This movie definitely like cuts away like during the middle of action scenes like a lot. Yeah. I think because it's not supposed to be that focus isn't the action. It's supposed to be like the characters and the shocking moments. I'm pretty sure. The action is just supposed to be like background noise. So, back at JT's barbecue shop, we see that he's got, like, a flashy bike that he got from Jesse James. It says, uh, what does it say about God? Uh, I, it had some lettering on it that was really prominent. It said, like, uh, in God we trust, all others must pay. Something like that. And uh, he's got some drop-top car, <laughs> some convertible. So he's just got flashy shit. And also at this point, we get a very random moment of Ray seducing Cherry. Extremely random. Very random. Like, I mean, they've kind of... not They haven't even really flirted. It's just hinted that they once had a relationship and they seem annoyed by each other. But Ray takes this moment on JT's waterbed to be like, yo, it's going down. And uh, Cherry's like, She's, um, she has no defense against this dude's charm, bro. Like, I picture this is how you picked up your woman. You just take off your shirt and you're kind of like, we're here. Man. So what now? My shirt's off. Oops. <laughs> Oops. You gonna add that one to the fucking repertoire, bro? Not right now. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna be like, uh, it's my jacket. Yeah. I was looking for it for three <laughs> weeks, two weeks, two weeks. So the plot, so Ray's been saying this line repetitively, and uh, the point of it is that he planned on proposing to Cherry, and he had to put the ring in the jacket. So he's actually talking about the ring when he's like, "I look for it for two weeks," and I think this is kind of the catalyst that makes Cherry just go, "You know what? Why not?" Okay. So, would you call the sex scene explicit? No. So you let a child watch it? Oh, no. <laughs> so it was explicit. <laughs> yeah. Because they didn't show anything, but they showed a lot at the same time. Yeah. Like, we saw positions without actually seeing, like, any crevices. And then the uh, the reel kind of did this, like, uh, melted away thing. Like, if the film reel was damaged or some shit. Yeah, it even said, uh, <clears throat> lost Mist, It says missed real. Yeah. And, uh, on a TV, it looks really corny. But at the movie theater, this was effective. You know what I'm saying? Because you're like, oh, okay, it's really playing on, like, a reel. Yeah. But on a TV, I could see, did you think it was corny? A little bit. But, I mean, I was trying to... I, I do remember when these, like, hit theaters. So I knew that it did go to theater. I tried to, like, imagine I was there. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because they have this missing reel, like, in the middle of the sex scene. <clears throat> so it's implied that we missed, like, some good stuff. 
And when it cuts back in, they've probably jumped ahead like an hour, it feels. Because now the whole barbecue shack is on fire. People are wounded. People are there that weren't there before. The doctor's wife and her kid's body, she's there like hugging the body and shit. The fucking babysitters are there. The strip club boss is there out of nowhere. And, um, yeah, I think that's everybody. And there was some part we missed, apparently, where Ray explained who he was to the deputy that's been a prick to him. And now he's like, I didn't know who you were, El Ray. And he, like, whispered in his ear. Yeah. And so now Ray's allowed to have guns. And he does this, like, uh, farmer's trick with fucking two handguns. Very cheesy. The, and the clumsy deputy also shot the... Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah, that's why the uh, deputy's got a gunshot wound, because Tom Savini shot him. <laughs> okay. He said, I knew one of these fucking deputies would shoot me, but not you, man. <laughs> <laughs> and so, <clears throat> after this, they they make a fight against the zombies, right? Because there's a horde approaching the shack. So they go outside, and they dump on all these zombies, and you think, all right, they uh, they've done it. They beat them. Because the zombies turn around and fucking retreat, which is something I noticed that threw me off. You don't see that in zombie movies at all. No, zombies don't retreat. I appreciated that. You thought it was different? Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, they're not necessarily zombies. They're bio-mutated people, technically, right? Yeah. But, I mean, that's kind of what zombies are. But, no, zombies are reanimated corpses. I don't know. We'll get into the fucking uh, semantics of it in a little bit. So, these zombies retreat, and you think, all right, they've won. But no, they just regroup with the bigger horde, right? Mm -hmm. So now the big horde's coming. Ray has to tell everybody, all right, back inside. And uh, it's at this point that Ray says, I need somebody to run out and turn that truck on. And he tries to send the uh, strip club owner first. But then Cherry snatches the keys from him, and he's like... uh, Hey, it's time to go, go, not cry, cry, which is a reference to what he told her for crying on stage earlier, which I thought was funny. So she runs out still on a fucking peg leg, right? Yeah. And Ray's like covering for just dumping on anything that gets close to her. She gets to the truck, turns the truck on, brings it back, crashes it through the fucking building. And uh, at this point, everybody gets kind of uh, separated to different cars, right? Yeah. As far as tight. I liked it. They have the uh, the big truck, the convertible, the motorcycle, and on top of all of that... Oh, and uh, the doctor's wife's car, right? No, they didn't take it. It's the doctor's wife who's on the back of the, oh. back of the bike. Where did they get the mini bike from? From her trunk. So the doctor's <laughs> wife had a mini bike in the back of her trunk. And of course, you know, Ray's going to take this motherfucker. So he's got like his knees up to his shoulders. Yeah. And uh, he's leading this fucking caravan. And he's shooting zombies on the mini bike while he's coasting down this road. And also, whoever's driving um, Ray's truck, the deputy, I think, right? Yeah. He's hitting every zombie he can. And at one point, even JT's got a dog in his convertible, and it jumps out of the convertible, and the deputy runs that motherfucker (laughs) over. (laughs) Glorious. And uh, don't they end up pulling up to a bridge that's, like, got hella zombies on it? It's an impasse. Yeah. They're like, we don't got enough ammo. And uh, you think they're getting rescued by Bruce Willis' team. Because they, Bruce Willis and his soldier guys dump on all the zombies. But then they proceed to uh, fucking splinter cell behind Ray on like wires and they knock Ray out. And uh, I'm going to pause right here for a second because I think this, this movie built up to what I felt like this should have been around the end of it. Do you think that if it had ended here, it would have been about the right like spot? Yeah. Because we were talking about how it was a long movie. It did feel like it stretched. Like, because this is like an extra 20 minutes after this, right? Mm. And uh, not a whole lot happens. I mean, not 
not really action wise, but you get to like you find out where it comes from. So I, yeah, I guess, but I still think that's though. Why. I don't know why the pacing just felt off for it to like turn here. It really did. It's, I don't know. Because it feels like a secondary story at this point. Yeah. Feels like it could have been turned into a sequel here. And then they could have just added on. Yeah, because like, I don't know. Like, I feel like it was building and building. And then when we get to this point, this feels like the peak. But then it's like, but wait. There's, there's more. There's more. And so, Ray wakes up in a holding cell with his entire group, right? Mm -hmm. Which doesn't look like that many people now. And um, doesn't two guards come to uh, snatch up Cherry and the doctor's wife? Yeah. And they never say what they're doing with them at first. They just take them and put them in a separate cell. Yeah, everybody thought that they were all there being quarantined. And then they take them. They're just going to use them as sex slaves pretty much, right? I don't think that was the original intention. I think that was just something that... Quentin Tarantino was going to do himself, bro? Yeah. Yeah, because one of these guards is Quentin Tarantino, who plays the best pervert of all time. In just about every movie. Yeah, Yeah. dude, because from dusk till dawn, he's like into that chick's feet and shit. Yeah. Glorious. (laughs) And, um... I think also they find out that the Middle Eastern guy from the beginning of the movie, as Josh called him, uh, fucking, his name is uh, Abi, the guy who was obsessed with taking balls. He's in the holding cell. And uh, he kind of, doesn't he say he has a cure? Yeah. Like towards the end of his little like rant. So he tells them the people that were not affected by it are immune. And that they could be used for a cure. Mm. And then he says that he has a cure. That's right. And uh, so after the guards have taken Cherry and the doctor's wife, JT and Ray manage to fight the guards that are inside the holding cell. And uh, JT gets shot in this process. Mm -hmm. So he lies down next to his brother, who also has a gunshot wound in his neck. And Ray and Abby themselves kind of take off holding rifles. And they go in an elevator. And after this part, there's a part where the guards are all in, like, this control room watching some uh, movie. And it's more of, like, those Grindhouse-style, like, trailers. It's like, they are women. They are naked. And they are in love. It's fucking awesome. I like that whole aesthetic, bro. Yeah. What is it like? Women in cages. <laughs> yeah. And uh, right after Quentin Tarantino sees that, he's like, "All right, I'm gonna go get my dick wet." And uh, his one of his boys is like, um, "Bro, she's got one leg." What does he say? He said it's easy access. Easy access. And the dude kind of shrugs, and they both go. So presumably, they're both going to just rape these chicks. Which is weird, because it's a really dark thing, but it felt really lighthearted in the moment. I don't know if that's just the way Quentin Tarantino just portrays the dude or whatever, but like as he says it, you're like, oh, this is about to be a good time. And uh, so he ends up going to her. And uh, how does that all play out? Because I'm drawing a blank. Like I know the big parts, but how does it play out? Um... He goes in there and they're like talking. I don't remember what he's saying. <clears throat> but he like keeps I know he keeps taking his mask off. Right? And then he says it's like time to get down to business and he like fucking takes the whole like entire respirator off. But and she's like talking shit the whole time, right? Yeah. And I think that's like killing time. Yeah. So you start to see his like face like blister up and shit and his boy's even telling him like bro your mask and he's like there's no time for that then he unzips his pants and when he pulls his fucking dick out it's turned into like pretty much mush yeah like, silly putty just like it's all falling off and shit yeah and uh cherry's horrified at the sight of this as anybody would be mm-hmm. and um 
how does he end up on the floor? She kick him. She kicks yeah, him in the he face. Said, he said something about uh, I don't remember why he said it, but he said uh, just break. Oh, cause she was dancing. He had her dance for him. Um, and then she was dancing. He was like, "That's it." He like break a leg, and then she like fucking spinning back kicks him right in the head, and breaks the uh the pig leg on his head. She stabs him in his fucking eye with her pig leg, right? Yeah, with the rest of it. And then he gets up and he's like, you gave me some wood. Now I'm going to give you some wood. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but also while this whole thing is happening, I forgot before this even, Bruce Willis oh, and that dude, Abby, they uh, ambush. Bruce Willis. I meant to say Ray and Abby. Ray and Abby fucking ambush Bruce Willis. And uh, Bruce Willis decides to take this time to take off his uh, respirator. And he's like, where are my men? And Abby has, like, a Walmart bag full of just balls he throws at him. Mm -hmm. And so at this point, Bruce Willis decides he's going to monologue the entire story of why this all happened. Well, so, like, he took his mask off because he ran out of the gas. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he tells him that him and his guys were in Afghanistan or something, right? Mm -hmm. Or Middle East somewhere. And they found Bin Laden in a cave, and they shot him and he was like we weren't supposed to be there and we weren't supposed to do that so was it like a punishment for him i'm guessing to take the gas that's the part that i didn't understand i didn't know if like Cause that's what he says he's like we didn't get a congressional medal of honor he's like we got this gas hmm. yeah i didn't know if he was meaning that they were punished or that they were working on the gas when he found bin laden and then they were exposed to it Mm-hmm. So that's what I was assuming. That's why we don't join the army, man. Yeah. We kill terrorists and they're going to give us gas. Mm. So then we're back to when... Do, do. Oh, yeah, so Cherry puts the wood into the uh, Quentin Tarantino's eye. Now he's gotten up. And his skin has gotten even worse. It's like really dripped off now. Now he just looks like... How do you describe what he ends up looking like, bro? Like it's all like just caked and falling off. He reminded me of... Uh, of Nemesis from... Yeah, yeah, from Resident Evil. At least the texture of the skin. He wasn't that big. No, not at all. Like, he had a featureless, just flesh-covered face that was falling. Mm -hmm. And so he's still about to fuck Cherry. But now the uh, doctor's wife has gotten use of her hands again. And she pulls out this, like, gun that shoots the needles that she has. And she shoots the other guard in the leg or something and knocks him out. And then she shoots Quentin Tarantino in his eye. And, yeah, we're completely glazing over the fact that she broke her wrist earlier. Because she puts up both of her hands at one point and, like, squeezes her knuckles, right? Yeah. And so after this, we get the most, this is hard to say, like, unbelievable moment. Because Ray comes into the room with a fucking uh, a giant rifle. And he's like, I've got something for you. And he shoves the rifle into her leg. So now she has a giant machine gun for a leg, right? Nah. Which is a cool, like, aesthetic. But there's a lot of things that make you wonder, like, how does it work? Yeah, right? Because he puts... So he puts the uh, the magazine in. Mm -hmm. and, like, cocks it back. So I, I had seen the uh, trailers for this movie a long ass time ago. So I was expecting her to have that gun. Mm -hmm. But um, I always thought that she would just like reach down and like pull the trigger, but she doesn't. She like she just puts her, her leg up. And... Clenches the ass cheeks. He thinks the mechanism is just attached to her asshole. Yeah. Yeah. I like to think so too. <laughs> she like queefs to reload it. Nah. It's like, I can kegel 75 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> So now that Cherry has this leg, the group makes a run for heli for the helicopters because that's their plot is they're going to use the helicopters to escape because Ray could fly a copter, right? Mm -hmm. 
and the uh, the strip club owner can fly a helicopter. Yeah. Which brings up another problem I got to talk about a little bit. So, as they're making this break for the helicopter, they're running across this, like, blacktop and series of fences. And they're getting shot at by the remaining soldiers from Bruce Willis's campaign or whatever. And, uh... This whole time, the dude, Abby, he's there, like, proclamating, like, yo, we're the cure, you guys. We got to be careful. We can't die because only we can fix this. But we got to get to my lab so I can develop this cure. And then he gets his head shot off. <laughs> and uh, there's this moment where uh, Cherry's like, are there any other biomedical scientists around? And that's kind of like the film telling you, like, all right, we're throwing this one out the fucking window. So now they have to do Ray's plan, which is go to Mexico, put your back to the water. That's what he keeps saying, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, then he gives like Cherry this look, and he's like, you know what to do. This is up to you. You have to become who you must become. And now she has a fucking grenade launcher in the rifle in her leg. She shoots herself off the fucking ground like 50 feet into the air. Does this like belly roll onto the ground does like break dancing shooting with her leg and uh does she get on a motorcycle or is this later i think that's later <clears throat> oh yeah and also before all this uh ray gave jt a uh detonator with the trigger on it oh yeah because they weren't gonna go because they felt like they were gonna die him and his brother Yeah, but so I put after uh, Cherry does all this shit with like, uh, I put she has an infinite rocket launcher on her leg. She never reloads it. Yeah. Because traditionally you have to have like a different rocket for each time you shoot it, right? Mm -hmm. But so after she kills like 50 dudes with this leg, she does this like, uh, she finds some shades on the floor. She puts some shades on, stands up and does this like 80s action star pose and doesn't notice that there's a <laughs> what? 80s action star folks yeah, yeah. oh they, that, that thing is exactly what bruce campbell's doing over there and uh <clears throat> she doesn't notice that the one guy is right behind her about to shoot her so unfortunately for ray his plot armor completely shatters at this point because he shoots this dude point blank 50 times but the guy manages to also shoot him back 50 times yeah which is the book definition of plot armor, right? Like you're untouchable through your entire life and until this moment, until the movie needs you to die. <laughs> this is very silly to me. I put it as the one that he was shooting was another abnormal. Another abnormal. Yeah. Another colossal. Ah, uh, man, I just think, yeah. I don't know why. I think I felt it was unnecessary. Like, would it have changed anything if he had lived? No. Mm. But yeah, so now we have Ray lying on the ground, bullet holes all over, and it's heavily implied he's going to die. He's given, like, last wordsy moments to Cherry. And um, she's like, you can't leave me. It's supposed to be us, two against the world. And then Ray, like, touches her stomach, and he goes... It will be, because I never miss. Which is something else that he's been saying the whole movie. So apparently the dude's fucking... He can bust in a V-line for them eggs, you know? Yeah. He put a baby in her in one shot. So then a rope falls down from a helicopter above Cherry as he dies. She lifts off. And the part that I was talking about is there's only two people that could fly helicopters. So how the fuck did they fly the helicopters? It was only one that left. But they were in two separate ones. Because remember, they got in one, and then the doctor's wife goes into a different helicopter, and that's where she kills the uh, her husband, who's there again. Yeah, but she was the one that dropped the rope to Cherry. <clears throat> so they all just rode off in one helicopter? Yeah. Oh, okay. That makes sense. But they are plotting for two, so it confused me. Yeah. I think they were going to take two, but only... They only needed one. 
they didn't have that many people. Mm. Makes sense. So now we get the last shot of the movie. We're getting exposition from Cherry. She's in Mexico, right? Mm -hmm. And they have like a whole caravan of people, Resident Evil Extinction style. They're in like the desert on horses and shit. And uh, everybody's there. And everybody just looks like they're living their best life. Yeah. Like they've gone full like Walking Dead, you know, season four. Now they're all season killers. And uh, at one point, a zombie even jumps out of the fucking ground out of nowhere to surprise him. But Cherry now has a Gatling gun instead of a regular rifle on her foot, on her leg. And, uh, yeah, she kills the zombie with her Gatling gun. And it looks like they're staying at some, like, Mexican ruins, right? Like some old-ass temple? Yeah. And uh, we see Cherry with her, her baby, who is a girl. And I think that's it. That's Planet Terror. Hmm. So, all right, let's just get this out of the way. You didn't like it. Not that much, no. Um, I don't mind, like, corny movies and shit. Mm -hmm. But I feel like in some cases this one was, like, a little, a little too corny for me. Any part in particular? I think all the cheesy one-liners. Um... And then, uh, I don't know. Like I said, I'm more of a, like a realistic zombie movie, or action movie type of person. So like the, uh, her fucking shooting herself off of the ground without being injured. So, the part where she's walking around on a rifle for a leg. Yeah, that bothered me, too. Ah, okay. <laughs> Doesn't, like, damage the barrel at all? Yeah. Like, I like I like the movie. It just, just wasn't that good, I guess. Yeah, you know, I think I like it, too, but I also acknowledge that, like I said at the beginning, it's a generic fucking zombie movie, bro. Yeah. I mean, like Robert, but I think Robert Rodriguez styled it in a way that it was unique to himself, though. Because when you think of a movie, can you think of a movie similar to this? Outside of his other movies. No. Then no. Which, which I don't mind. Like, I like some of his other movies. Just, this one wasn't as good, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I can think of something close as, like, uh, Rob Zombie's, like, House of a Thousand Corpses, Devil's Rejects. But those are also, his style is very Grindhouse inspired. Mm. Like, he wants it to look like an older movie. Yeah. And that's like some filter he used throughout this whole movie is that it's all grainy and shit, right? Oh, uh, yeah. That one, I could under. I think that's another one where uh, it makes more sense if you're in the movie theater. Yeah, but on the TV, like I said, it looks like it's just a filter they put on. Yeah. Um... I don't know, man. Like, I liked, like I said, he made it his own, though. Like, even though it's a very generic story and there's not a whole lot there, the characters are very unique. As the fucking guy who's obsessed with taking balls, we got Cherry, the stripper with the fucking machine gun leg. If anything, the most bland character in the story, which is something that unfortunately happens to, uh, I talked to you about this before. What defines what makes a movie, in my opinion, good or not, is how strong your villain is and how strong your hero is. Ray's a very bland fucking hero, bro. Yeah, he is. He's a one-dimensional good guy on God mode the entire movie, right? Mm. Untouchable until he can be touched. And who is the bad guy? Bruce Willis? How much do we know about Bruce Willis? Not a thing. Exactly. Yeah. So, are you kind of getting at like how that could have a big, heavy impact on how you feel about a movie in general? Yeah. Um, but like I said, I feel like they're side characters. They beef them fucking up. Josh Brolin, bro, the doctor, his yeah. wife, even uh, the deputy and JT. They had more character development than fucking Ray and uh, Bruce Willis. Yeah. Hell, Quentin Tarantino was a fucking more convincing villain. Yeah. I think they just relied on the fact that they were big names like Josh Brolin and Bruce Willis. 
fucking Fergie. But no. Um, stacking it up to other zombie movies, I mean, like we said, this is just... There's not a whole lot to talk about because it's a shoot 'em up fucking zombie flick, bro. The violence is good. The gore is good. I feel like the style of it's good, but the story is definitely lacking. They, it's literally the plot line of Resident Evil, bro. They escape on the helicopter as the fucking thing explodes. All they needed was like a tyrant character to chase after him, and they shoot it with a rocket from the fucking helicopter. And that's how like four out of the nine Resident Evil games end. Did you ever connect that? No. Well, because I've only I've watched the first two Resident Evil movies. That's Not the fun. movies, the games. Oh no, I didn't play the games. Resident Evil One, bro. They're flying away from a helicopter and they shoot the tyrant on top of the mansion. Resident Evil Two, I'm pretty sure they're flying away from the military base and they shoot the tyrant. From the helicopter with a, a missile launcher. Number three, I think she blows up Nemesis on a clock tower, flies away. Literally, now that I think about it, they all end with a rocket launcher from a fucking helicopter. And in the fifth one, bro, Chris Redfield shoots a Wesker Tyrant with a rocket launcher and a volcano <laughs> as he's flying away on a helicopter. Anyways, I like zombies, guys. There's like an entire shelf dedicated to zombies right behind you. You ever seen uh, 28 Weeks Later? Yeah, 28 Days and 28 Weeks. Those are fire. Those are like a more realistic zombie thing. Yeah. But then again, that comes back to the argument. Are these actually zombies? I mean, they seem... They have like the aspects of them. I just think they like deteriorate faster. You know. Yeah, then they didn't follow the zombie rules, though, man. They didn't need to be shot in the head. Like, they pieced a couple of them up in the chest. I feel like in this movie, they had to die by a headshot when it was... Convenient? Yeah, when it was convenient for where they were going. Hmm. Otherwise, um, he would have killed the two that took Cherry's leg. You know? Yeah, because he was, like, shooting them, and they were running like it was nothing, right? Yeah. And also the one, the zombie or whatever that killed Ray would have died. So he got shot at fuck ton. You know? But. All right, but more importantly, the one thing I'm taking away from this movie and the question I got to ask you, would you ever date one chick with one leg? <laughs> Most beautiful one-legged chick you've ever seen. I'm more of a personality guy. So you would look past the one leg? Possibly, yeah. Is it because of uh, easier access? <laughs> no. Would you be quicker to look past a leg or an arm? I think I'd be quicker to look past a uh, Fuck, I don't know. Probably a leg. So you'd rather them miss a leg than an arm? I don't know. Man. Is it so they can make you sandwiches easier? You shoving as fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it, just, so hard? it just reminds me of a Daniel Tosh joke. He said, uh, he said women need to like chill out with this. Uh, oh, if I lost a leg, would you still love me? If I lost an arm, would you still love me? He's like, you can lose a toenail, find out real quick. I'm shallow. <laughs> <laughs> That's real shit, though, man. No, nah, but whenever uh, the part of the movie where Bruce Willis was telling the Afghanistan story, that reminds me of this uh, conspiracy theory that I heard one time about uh, Afghanistan. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure how much he paid attention to the news and stuff. Do you remember whenever uh, Trump had gotten elected a couple years back, He was uh, they had bragged that he was dropping this bomb in Afghanistan called uh, the Mother of All Bombs. Oh, yeah. In the lab. The biggest non-nuclear like nuclear a weapon that's been deployed since fucking World War II, right? Mm. And, um, yeah, so the conspiracy theory that I heard, it was on a conspiracy theory podcast, this could all be bullshit, but supposedly back in the day, uh, in Afghanistan, in, like, the biblical stories and shit, you know, there's, like, giants and stuff, 
Mm. Um, supposedly in Afghanistan, there's still giants, like tribes of man-eating giants or whatever. And there's stories over there that's in the military among soldiers that they're actually still fighting fucking giants over there. And do you know what the uh, name for the fucking giants in the Bible was? There was a specific tribe of giants from Afghanistan called the Moabs. M-O-A-Bs. <laughs> so the theory is, you know, they dropped this bomb to kill the giants. That's why they called it the mother of all bombs, the Moab bomb. I don't know. I always thought that was tight. So when Bruce Willis was telling a story about like fucked up shit happened in Afghanistan, I was like, I believe him. Damn. You ever had an itch to join the military? I think we've talked about that before. I feel like you have. Yeah, I did. I wanted to uh, when I was younger. What stopped you from doing it? I don't know. Just never did it. No, just like kind of. Like, the thought or want kind of, like, left me. I feel like sometimes that can be, like, an impulse decision. Yeah. Like, if something's not going good that, like, day or that week or, hell, even that year, you're like, man, fuck this place, bro. I got to get out of here. Yeah. So, I know, I know at the time, like, initially I was, like, doing stupid shit. And I wanted to go to, uh, I don't know learn some discipline i guess and then um i kind of like got out of that shit on my own and then it hit me another time where we were like fresh out of high school had a bunch of friends joining Mm -hmm. and uh i think at that time like they kept telling me like oh this is my sign-on bonus and all this shit and so then the next time it was like more so like i thought about the money but then i thought like you can't i can't like join that and do that just for money like i would have to be all in and i'm not so so it's probably a good call that you didn't then yeah yeah i think that's like anything like um i would compare it to like me going to college like i went to college because my parents made me pretty much uh they didn't make me obviously at gunpoint or anything but they heavily like implied like we want you to go you have to go and I wasn't really all in for it. So I definitely like half-assed while I was there. So I guess the whole thing would have been the same for you at the military. You'd have half-assed it. <laughs> but who knows? That's kind of different though, bro. I feel like once you got there, you would have probably shined. Maybe. I don't know. I know I support the tr- troops. Like I, I respect what they do. Mm. I mean, shout out to them, bro. They yeah. give up their fucking freedom. Yeah, exactly. It's bigger than us, man. Mm. Shout out to the troops. Hopefully they don't gas you guys and make your dicks fall off. (laughs) Hmm. If you had a choice, right? Okay. So say if you were going to be given this, like, gas canister. Or. Or say you could turn, like, invisible, right, when you take it off. But you look all ugly, but you're invisible, so nobody sees you. Would you do it? Or would you wear the gas canister like Bane all the fucking time? You you turn invisible when you take it off? Yeah, but you also look like a sledge monster. Oh. No, I'd probably wear it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> look, we we both seen what can happen when you take it off. You're fucking dick. <coughs> All right, follow-up question. Uh, would you be down to become invisible if the only way you could activate it was by putting your thumb in your ass? <laughs> no. Why not? I don't have any reason to go invisible. I don't I don't have that want or need to do that. You wouldn't want to be a spy, bro? The greatest spy there ever was. No, nah, I'm fine. You sure? Yep. I saw some doubt in your eye. <laughs> <laughs> must be your classes reflecting. I'm sorry, dude. There wasn't a lot to talk about in this movie, and I'm st- I'm stretching now. Okay, yeah. I'm having to pull out the secret weapons. But no, okay. So we'll go ahead and get into the rating, bro. One to six inches. What are you giving it? Planet Terror. I'd give it a solid three. 
That's very generous. Yeah. I mean, the movie stylized good. Like I said, I like it, but objectively, I can't go above a two because of the story. How did you come upon to your rating? It's random, to be honest. You just <laughs> set a fucking number? Yeah. Well, because usually, all right. If you watch these podcasts, you know I haven't been on a podcast in a while. But you also know every time I give a rating, you either I'm either like lowballing it to you, or I'm highballing it to you. You know. Kind so like I was in like, real okay. Life. Yeah. So I was like, all right, I'm just gonna shoot for the middle. <laughs> Play it. Play it safe, bro. Yeah. Still fucking highballing it. Do you ever feel like you give a rating and then I explain my rating and it feel like wavers yours a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Because you're, I don't know, I'm not a big talker or like very good at like explaining shit. So when I try to explain my ratings, I feel like after I'm done talking, it's just like. Yeah, that didn't really make sense. <laughs> <And> <laughs> that, didn't come out, yours. that didn't come out I meant for it. Yeah. And then I hear yours and it's just like, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Like, this guy knows what he's talking about. <laughs> nah, dude. I mean, you just say how you felt about the movie, man. Like I said, if it didn't capture your attention, that in and of itself is a reason to drop the rating. I mean, it had my attention uh, not through the entire movie. Like we said, it, it felt like it stretched there at the end. But... And also, I feel like you referenced that you were hungry five times during this. Well, yeah, I was. I was fucking starving. Still am. <laughs> I've heard his stomach like three <laughs> times. <laughs> but, I don't know. I don't think the movie was that bad. Yeah, it was lacking in story. And they did drag it on, but... I don't know. Yeah, and there's not a lot to talk about on this one. I thought, so I'm learning something every time I do these podcasts. So in my head, I'm like, all right, you know, it'd be kind of a fun movie to do. This is to me a fun movie because I've done like The Lodge. Uh, there's a couple other slower ones. The Visit, <clears throat> even though The Visit was tight. But like, it's hard doing the slower movies because the slower movies, like, see how I, this has only been an hour. I ran through the whole movie in an hour. But movies like The Visit and shit, bro, they took like three hours. Let me in. Because breaking down all the metaphors, all the hidden meanings of shit, all the symbolism. But now I've seen from doing this, there's a difference. There's got to be like a safe medium spot. Because this movie was definitely all show with no story. Whereas the other ones are all story with not really showing anything. So I'm trying to find like the balance between the two, which I'm still working on. But no, we're going to get the formula down at some point, especially once you start working with me, bro. I expect you to do a lot more of these. Yeah. But no, so we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up, guys. Um, make sure you check out the YouTube page, Instagram, Facebook. It's all Death Taco Podcast. Um, we're on Spotify, Apple Music. If you've gotten this far, hopefully you figure that shit out at this point. Uh, with all that being said, thank you, Josh, for being here today. This has been the Death Taco Podcast. <laughs>